Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, two guys, guys in a ride. ride. And today we're at the Minneapolis Convention Center and this is the Progressive International Motorcycle Show. And uh, you know, what are we gonna do today, Nate? Hey, today we are gonna take a look at a whole bunch of really cool motorcycles and some side-by-sides and some custom bikes and some builds. Ooh, I'm excited about yes. that. But hey, before we do, take a moment, hit that subscribe button below and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right, so what do you say, Nate? Um, let's, let's go, go look, look for a ride. ride. All right. Hey folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and we're, we're here at the Progressive uh, Motorcycle Show in Minneapolis. And today, uh, just a little bit earlier, we got to witness a really, really neat uh, motorcycle stunt show. Kyle Sliger is here. He is uh, one of the chief drivers. Yep. In fact, it's your show. Uh, here, we got your own truck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, this is the bike that he was driving. And so, we're going to, you know, talk to him a little bit. Kyle, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into motorcycles and Tell us a little bit about Icon and, and Kyle Sliger's stunt.com as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, really, the, the Icon is a, is a helmet brand, and they sponsor me and support what I do and, and help me you know, go to all these events and everything. From head to toe, they, they cover me up. And the stunt shows that we're actually doing here today is, with this, um, is a championship series called XDL Show. And basically, we have athletes come in through all over the world, and they come here to America, and we travel a few stops and do a series. So it's a championship, and now we're doing the promotion and basically doing stunt shows along the way as we do that, and that's why you see me and Rob Carpenter. He's one of the V-Twin competitors in the XDL series, and uh, so and I was one of the guys who actually won last year under the stop. So, so yeah, I'm sitting in a good seat right now, so it's hopefully there's another competition coming up here. As you can see on the signs here, it's July 26th and 7th in Cleveland, and hopefully I can maintain that good spot. But, but starting stunt riding was not something I planned on doing. You know, I actually didn't ride motorcycles until I was 19 years old, and and I skateboarded my whole childhood growing up. And now that I um, got older, I, I always wanted a motorcycle, family, and and stuff that just didn't have the the funds to get one for me. But I uh, ended up getting you know a good job and bought a motorcycle and decided to go out and and try to do what I was doing on my motorcycle, what I used to do on my skateboard, which is totally two different worlds. And, and, and yeah. And surprisingly, getting on the bike, it, uh, it it was like a natural ability and just coordination balance. I think all that adapted from skateboarding. And I wish I would have had one when I was a younger kid. I'd probably be better off, you know, even so. But that's just how it goes. And, and yeah, I'm glad to be doing it now. And I moved my way up, all the way up the ladder and trying to be one of the best. Just trying to do a professional job at it. Trying not to, you know, be on the streets and, and causing a bunch of mayhem. I like to do it professionally a lot where it's controlled and, and turn this into an, a, a legitimate sport because it really is. And just uh, the faces of the people, you know, in public don't really know that there's a legit sport based on stunt riding. They think it's all the hooligan stuff on the streets, which, you know, it's sad, but hopefully we're working our better way to the more professional side of things. All right. So um, another question that I have is um, this wasn't your first bike, right? So what was your what was the very first bike you started doing stunts on? Uh, the first bike actually was the, the same size, the 600 class, but it was a Honda 2001 F4i. Um, I highly recommend no one ever starting on that size of a bike if you're going to get into trick riding or even riding, period. Um, but I, I just jumped the gun and went out and, and had to get what I wanted. That's just how I was. I was a greedy young kid. So, and But it took me longer to learn the, the tricks because of that and, and to getting used to the bike and get, and adapting to it by getting that bigger one. And, and now once I've gotten the bigger bike and got on smaller ones, I realized, well, this is probably what I should have done because there's some things I learned on those small bikes that I just jumped right on this and all of a sudden I could do it. And it's just kind of the kind of how it worked out for me. Okay, so uh, did you ever have an accident? Yeah, yeah, I did. Right in the beginning, learning th the foot brake was kind of the hardest part of the whole stunt riding altogether. And as I was learning the foot brake, about three months into stunt riding, I actually wobbled the bike so hard that the tire caught and launched itself in the air 
and it was next to me as I'm 15 feet in the air because it somehow this thing just sprung us up and nosedived right into my shoulder and broke my collarbone. But it was a pretty bad crash, and I'm sitting there, and I was like, man, if, if that's all it is, then, you know, this is all right. I can, I can handle this. I can handle another one of these. So I think after that moment, the fear kind of just went poop out the door, and I was just in 100% in focus on, I, I, I'm going to can pursue stunt riding. This is the game I'm going to get into. So Yeah, so there, is, there is that little factor of fear at the beginning, but then when something happens, you figure, hmm, okay, yes. that's the worst life could throw at me. I'm good. Yep. So uh, now you're a skateboarder. And, and, and you did a lot of skating before you ever got into motorcycles. In any way, did that experience in, in your sense of balance or whatever, do you think uh, had anything to do with your, your skill in doing stunt riding on motorcycles? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's two totally different worlds, obviously, and, and getting on the sport bike is nothing like the skateboard, but I think the, the skateboard more so added like a, a style to what I do and gave me that feet coordination to where I knew where my feet were and I can move them, not knock myself off the bike, and just gave me that real good that good style. And uh, also, yeah, that's what I did as my whole childhood growing up with skateboarding. I was actually sponsored, had free skateboards and stuff, and pretty much night and day just shut the door on the skateboarding and, and started stunting riding and and sometimes I look back and almost regret it but at the same time I don't because I took in stunt riding so far and, and was able to change the game and do some cool tricks that nobody else has done and, and reinvent the sport and I don't think I would have been able to do that with skateboarding because of the competition level in skateboarding is just so high yeah. but yeah if it weren't for skateboarding I, I gotta I don't think I'd have the control I do and the coordination we had talked a little bit earlier because you made the comment about not getting a bike till you're 19 that uh, your mother didn't even like to skateboard. Right, yeah. All right. So so we're, I think we're all on the same boat on that. I, I, I was a little lucky. I had a motorcycle when I was a little younger than you. But I don't ride like you. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I recommend no, to do it so, okay, so tell us, you know, when you, you switched from your skateboard to your motorcycle, mm -hmm. what did you do to practice? And where did you go? So, I mean... People are out there wondering, well, if I want to do this, whatever, how, I mean, was there a, an indoor arena that you went to, or how did you do it? Uh, there really wasn't an indoor arena. Um, really, the way I had to do it was travel to a parking lot and ride there for maybe 10 minutes, and then... I had, and the cops would probably show up within the next five. So I had a few minutes to get out of there, and I'd go to another one on about five or ten minutes down the road, and I'd do the same thing for ten minutes. And eventually I did that for about two years, kind of got tired of it, and then went to a, a motorcycle shop and asked them if they would mind me practicing. And they said, yeah, go ahead, feel free, and um, you know, clean up your trash when you leave. I'm like, really? So I was stoked, and I rode at that parking lot for 11 years straight. And then they changed positions, uh, changed shops, had a smaller lot I couldn't ride in. I had to go search for another one at that time, and was very fortunate to find a nice big enclosed parking lot, and I had permission to ride there. And so that's that's the story behind it. But not everybody is that fortunate to find a good actual place to do it. So. That's really neat, though. That that another motor, is it a motorcycle repair shop? Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah. It was a motorcycle sales shop repair. You know, just your basic, you know, mom and pop shop. So, so I, I just think that's neat that someone else who's into motorcycles sees you, sees like, you know, what's the harm in this? Let's let's let them do it. You know, we know there's nowhere else for him to go. So, if you're one of those people out there. Keep her out for somebody who needs your help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so let's talk about your motorcycle. Uh, yeah, I mean, the bike, uh, it's a Kawasaki 636. It's a 2015. It's um, actually one of the better bikes for stunt riding and what we do. But it's de this bike here is, is highly modified. Um, you can get into stunt riding and, and, and not have to do all of this. But with what the level we're doing it at, when you're really aggressive with the bike, you kind of got to overdo it. So now I have a fully custom frame. Everything's reinforced to steel instead of aluminum and we got cages on the side to protect the engine when you do fall because that's the biggest thing there you don't want to crack a case and have it leak in oil and just everything's just pretty much basically reinforced and also you got to really adjust the cooling system because these things are meant to go fast down the road and cool with air the you know cool the coolant the coolant circulates through the bike well right now we have to add more fans and we have to add silicone hoses we have to do everything we can to keep this thing at a cool rate because we're most of the time in a parking lot not gaining those 100 mile an hour speeds right. so but yeah other than that this bike is pretty much uh same factory engine no modifications to the engine and i got same rims and the swing arm and everything else is just like i say reinforced and custom panel bars to to my likings so now, once you had uh, practiced for a couple of years, at what point did you start performing 
and saying, okay, I think I'm good enough. Let me, or maybe people just showed up at the parking lot and started to watch. What, what, how did you transfer from this as a hobby to I can make money at this and make it a professional career? Um, uh, doing that was basically at the beginning of my of my career. I was stunt riding in parking lots. People would show up and watch, and then the word got out. And another guy that owned another bike shop actually was having a bike night. He he came to the parking lot and, and asked if I would ride at his bike night and and pay me about 500 bucks. And I said, well, heck yeah, that's more than I make in a week. I'll I'll be there. Yeah, count me in. And so I did that stunt show when I was there, and obviously a big crowd of people and everybody's you know. Who's this guy on the motorcycle? And I can only do maybe four or five tricks. And that's when I realized, hey, after that show, I felt like you know I was not wasn't doing well enough. I wasn't getting the noise out of the people. And that's when I went home. It's like I'm gonna practice more tricks. I'm gonna learn this, and I I see a future. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pursue and see what happens. Wow. So um, you know, if you're out there and you're you're dreaming like maybe I, you'd want to do this, you can tell us a lot of hard work, a lot of a lot of time on your own, a lot of you know some risks involved oh, yeah. you know at least for you at that time hopefully now there are more people who would be open to saying yeah come practice at our lot yeah. um but uh oh that that is just a neat story so i mean it's it's cool that it's normal yeah your mom and dad didn't go out and buy you this when you were you know turned 16 and gave you the bike and you've you've worked hard for this you had to wait a long time for it and then you had to dodge around and find practice joints and then you started you know slowly and humbly you know with you know people showing up to watch you and then eventually moving on so at what point did you hook up with like icon and start doing uh more more uh stuff where you could compete yeah yeah the icon um well, basically, when I was doing the stunt shows, I, I started watching this competition series, which was the XDL, and that was in the beginning of my career. I watched these guys just go out and ride so good, and then I would go home and try to practice some of those things. Well, along the process, I learned some of my own tricks that nobody else was doing at this competition. I felt like, hey, maybe I could go there and try this out. Well, in that process, I, did, I made a resume and reached out to a lot of different companies and, and trying to find support and backup since I was going to go to this big competition that has a good broadcast and a good follow following and well I got lucky enough and I got a phone call from Icon which I honestly thought it was a joke because it was the biggest name that I, I just kind of sense like there's no way no way and then I get a call and all of a sudden holy crap this is a life-changing you know phone call right here and lucky enough I got involved with them great company they've been taking care of me since the beginning and I, I owe a lot to them because if it weren't for them there's a lot of things that wouldn't be as nice I wouldn't probably have you know as much of a good image you know with the gear always head to toe nice and new and clean and back then it was just whatever I could afford mm -hmm. and so that's how I got with Icon and then the Shinko tires and then the Lexan Bluetooth company they all just started kind of coming along and then just people just wanted to jump on board that must have liked what I was doing so I just kept with it and kept pushing and now that's turning into a career and I get to live my life and live a dream so <laughs> <laughs> that is just awesome it, it, what, what a neat story I mean for those of you uh, who've seen Kyle perform before uh, or have followed his career um, to know that it came from a normal beginning yeah. Uh, and, and you've worked hard and you've created that dream and you've carved it out for yourself, uh, much to the delight of the viewers, I might add. So um, I wanted to ask you just a couple of questions more about the bike because from a, a viewer standpoint, staying off for a while, the bike looks really normal. But there are a couple of times you sit up on the tank mm -hmm. and being up close, I noticed the tank is a little different on the top. Yep. So you do actually have a seat. Yeah. on the tank so yeah. so it's a little maybe not I mean it's not really a seat but you've it's carved a little differently yep. so is is that like a custom tank is that a normal tank that you just kind of redid or um, it's it's a custom tank actually we we send these tanks off to there's other stunt riders in in the in the stunt industry that actually weld these tanks up and make them and make them nice and clean and have to vent them properly and move gas caps in order to get this nice clean look so we do have an extra seat and this extra seat in the gas tank adds a lot more tricks allows us to sit with our feet over the front end um, we can stand in it all kinds of different variations will come from just having this gas tank right here with this nice dent in it but we in the beginning it wasn't welding the tank it wasn't nothing clean we would take mallets and hammers and we would 
have this beautiful gas tank and watch our friends watch us just beat this thing in until we can make it look right. the best we can and throw some grip tape in it and off we go and and yeah we, grip tape even would just ruin jeans and everybody had holes in their pants in the back for like three or four years until this company came out with this HT Moto grip there and and now that's a game changer it just lasts forever and you can sit on it and all the grip you need and there's no more holy jeans there so <laughs> yeah I absolutely love it so um, you know if somebody wanted to, to you know watch your career and, and pay attention to where you were performing and stuff how would they do that uh, you I, you can actually check out my Instagram or my Facebook um, you can get through those to those through my website is Kyle and my Instagram is Kyle Slager 44 and Kyle Slager stunts on Facebook and there's all kinds of videos and cool stuff that you might not ever see in a stunt show that you'll see on those channels and I highly recommend that's pretty much how you keep along with everything I do so awesome well Kyle thank you so much for uh, being willing to do this interview absolutely absolutely and thanks for being an inspiration yep I tried to <laughs>